Thank you, David. As long as you don't kiss me like you did Steph, I'm, we're good. Okay, I want to talk about the future because the present pisses me off. The reason it pisses me off is it's too much like the past. If you have some intent, let's say you want to get some work done, you want to do something with your computing infrastructure, you have two choices. You have the same two choices in 2014 that you had last year, same two choices you had five years ago, same two choices you had two decades ago. You have a browser, right? You can go to the web, and you can use a browser, you can use a search engine, and you can hunt around for the information that you need to resolve your intent. Your second choice is to go to the app store and gather functionality that might be useful to you. That's it. You have the web through a browser and a search engine, or you have an app store, and that's it. Same thing we've been doing for decades. We are in this hunting and gathering mode in technology. We're hunters and gatherers, hunting for information, gathering functionality. That's what we do. You're a hunter and gatherer. I'm a hunter and gatherer. We're all hunters and gatherers, and it sucks, particularly on the app side of the equation. 90% of apps out there are downloaded less than 500 times. Only 1% of apps make any money. Why are we doing this? It's 2014. The Seahawks are good again. Hey, y'all got that. That was very good because y'all have that other kind of football, don't you? Yeah. I, I, I'm from Seattle and the Seahawks won last night and I stayed up till 4 a.m. to celebrate. So we need, we need a, a different sort of a world. Let me give you some examples of this. So I get this email from my daughter. Dad, there's this band coming to town to the Paramount Theater in Seattle. Will you take me? Now, this is pretty cool, right? She's a teenager. I'm in my 40s. You say you're in your 40s when you're over 45. If you're younger than 45, you just say your age. So I'm in my 40s. She's a teenager. She wants to hang out with me. But look at the work that I have to do. I have to research this band. It's called Of Monsters and Men. Who names a band of monsters and men? I'm from Seattle. We have badass names, right? Pearl Jam, Nirvana, Alice in Chains, right? What's this Of Monsters and Men crap in the Paramount Theater? I've got to hunt, right? I've got to go listen to the music. I've got to find tickets. I've got to do all of this work just to go out with my teenage daughter. This is crazy. It's too much. It's 2014. We can do better. Now, on, on the app side, the equation, it's not much better. Have you seen this movie? Right, this movie has the two things that every great movie has. It has zombies, because zombies are real. Remember all that vampire shit from a couple of years ago? Vampires aren't real. Zombies are real. They're coming, right? We can work out the science to explain zombies. They're coming, and it has Brad Pitt in it. Now, check this out. I'm in a movie theater watching this most perfect movie about zombies and Brad Pitt, and the, the, the girl I'm with, she pulls out her cell phone. In the middle of the movie, she pulls out her cell phone, and she's glancing down at it. And she's glancing down at it, and then she starts to count. Five, four, three, two, one. She touches me on the knee and says, I'll be right back. And she leaves a movie with zombies and Brad Pitt. A minute passes, two minutes pass. She comes back and she sits down. Now, normally when you're at the movies and you go out, right, and you come back and you sit next to a person, what do you ordinarily say? what I miss? Right, what I miss? She didn't say what I miss. So being proactive, I said, hey, you didn't miss anything. Do you know what she told me? Do you know what she said? She said, and I quote, I know. She knew she didn't miss anything because she's got this app that tells her when to pee at the movies. Do you know about this app? Somebody has watched every damn movie out there. They've curated it all. Here's the boring part. Here's the boring part. And if you just got to go, if you can't wait for the boring part, it tells you what you missed. This is brilliant. Now, I'm sitting there watching all these people leaving this movie, having to pee, come back, and I'm thinking, he ain't got the app, she ain't got the app, they ain't got the app. Here's what we've done to app developers of the world. We have told them, you can't have the customers that need you. If you have a pee app, all the people in the world need to pee, all the people in the world see movies, but you can't have them. You can only have the people who install you. That's it. One person in that movie theater had that app. And it wasn't the app she wanted, it was the functionality. 
just tell me when to pee. I want to domesticate this. I want to take all of this stuff that's on the web and I want to take all this stuff that's in the app store and I want to bring it to you where you are. That's domestication. Where are you in the technological world? You're in email, you're in Facebook, you're in Twitter, you're in SMS, right? These are your home. And I'm going to bring that functionality to your home. I'm going to show you two examples of this. So let's go back to this example with my daughter. She sends me this email. Bless her heart. She wants to spend her time, time with her old man. And I got work to do, don't I? But I'm going to domesticate this. No more flapping about with the web. I am going to press that little button down there at the bottom of the screen that says entities. Basically, what I'm doing here is I'm asking Bing, hey, Bing, have you ever found anything in this email that might help me out? And Bing underlines two things in there. The band of monsters and men, Bing's like, yeah, other people have searched on this and I found it, right? That's what happens. You search the web long enough, you find a bunch of shit. You just do because you search and you search and you search and we got all this stuff that we found, right? This is a found index. And it's also found the Paramount Theater. So now I can click on these. I can click first on of monsters and men and I got what we call the entity card. Check this out, this is the web. This is HTML5, this is JavaScript, this is CSS3. It's the web, except instead of going out to it in the hunting and gathering mode, we took the damn web by the collar and we said, no, you're coming to us. You're coming to me where I am, meet me where I am. And I can do everything here. Everything I can do on the web, I can do right here in Outlook. I can listen to the music, I can you know, watch videos, I can read about this band. And it turns out this band is from Iceland. I was actually kind of freaked out here because one sure way you know that you've screwed your kids up as a parent is that they grow up to like crappy music. It's just, that's bad parenting, man. And I'm scared of this. I'm thinking, oh God, it's going to be rap, right? All two chords of it. She's a teenager. What does she know about music? Or even worse, it's going to be some guy named Justin singing to me. I don't care what your last name is, Bieber, Timberland, whatever your last, if your first name is Justin, just shut up. We don't need you assaulting our senses all the time. Just be quiet. And so I start listening to this. I click because it's right here, right in the web, right in my outlook. And I listen to this music. Listen to this music. It's not rap. Oh God, don't let it be Justin. I'm thinking, don't let it be Justin. I hear this. Listen to this woman's voice. She's from Iceland. Who the hell is from Iceland, you know? And listen to this. It's like Janis Joplin and, and Chrissy Hines' vocal cords. And this moment of pride just comes over. My daughter likes good music. This is fantastic. I can't wait to see this band now. Because they're from Iceland. I thought elves lived there. Okay, so now I want to go see this band. Now the question is, am I going to take my daughter with me? Because Seattle, we legalized marijuana. By the way, the two teams in the Super Bowl are from the two states that have legalized marijuana in the United States. You want good football? Just saying. So um, uh, now I want to go, but this is Paramount Theater thing, right? Where is it? Is it in one of our real red light districts where, you know, you don't want to take your teenage daughter? Well, it turns out it's not because I've taken everything from the web. The web knows about Paramount Theater and I put it right here where I am. I can research this. I can buy tickets. I can look for parking. I can look for local restaurants. I could do everything I ordinarily would have done on the web. That's domestication. Okay, one more example. Now, this is an example of bringing functionality in. It's more than just the web, it's the app store as well. Now, there's this nice place called Hawaii. You all know about this? This is where people from Seattle go when we're sick of the rain, and we go there a lot. Now, if you want to go to Hawaii, you can have two choices. You can go buy some travel app, faff around with that. You can go to the web, some travel website, Expedia, Orbitz, Kayak, you choose. You can faff around with all that. You got a lot of work to do. You can sort through all the ads and all that crap. Or you can go to your calendar, which is where you want to be, because the first question you got to ask yourself is, when can I go? And you can flick around your calendar and you find the spot. I want to go that week. Now, when domestication, you simply touch the day you want to leave, Bing goes out, it's already got all the travel data. 
And it says, okay, here are the flights. And look at it. Notice we didn't have to design a UI here. We didn't have to build this complicated app. We just had to code the travel functionality. And then we display it on the canvas of our calendar, the place the user already is, the place most people plan travel in the first place. And so now the web knows how to book tickets. Apps know how to book tickets. I just taught my calendar how to book a ticket. And there it is. It's done. It's in my calendar where I want it. It's not in some text web page. Now, this is a pretty strong search signal. There's somebody just bought a ticket to Hawaii. They're going to need a hotel. So the next step is a little spot market for the hotels. How about all the hotels in Hawaii compete for my business? How about they come to me and say, OK, here's your lodging. Best deal goes on top, worst deal goes on the bottom. There's no ads. Right? The web is a place where it's not the best result that you get. It's the loudest result that you get. It's the people who spend the most time optimizing their search capabilities, the people who spend the most on advertising. Not in this model. In this model, it's value first. You can page through here, right, Windows 8 style. Do you notice I said Windows, I said Bing early. This is called branding. I'm totally going to get promoted for saying all this stuff when I get back. Right, and then you pick one, and it knows how to book it, and there it is. Now we have another search signal. This search signal is really strong, too. There's a family of people coming to Hawaii. They're going to need to eat. They're going to need to play. They're going to need to snorkel. They're going to need to hike. They're going to need to swim. They're going to need to do all of these things that all those merchants down there are really interested in. So we can have a little spot market for this right in our calendar. Here's all the stuff that we could find that you can do, right? This is functionality tamed and brought to you where you are. And this is a travel experience par excellence. And same thing, right? Search through here, figure out what you want to do, flip through this, flip through that. It's a beautiful magazine quality experience. It's not a bunch of links. It's not a bunch of text on web pages. This is the real deal. And so then you pick stuff, you drag it to your calendar, and it's booked, and it's there, right where you want it, on your calendar. And you can imagine going through this picking a bunch of stuff, and eventually you fill your calendar out, and there you are. You're done. So now I've shown you two examples. One where we domesticated the web, pulled information into email, where I already was, my home. And the second, travel data, pulled right into your calendar, where you already are, and all of that functionality exists. So I've done a couple of things here I want to summarize for you. So the first thing I've done is I've captured intent where it occurs. You notice I didn't go to a browser. I didn't, browsers, why browsers? Why have we told, why we have fooled the world by saying if you want to go to the web, browser is a tool for you. Why? Why have we granted browsers this special place? Oh, the browser, the web is yours. Not anymore. The web can go to email, the web can go to your SMS, the web can go to Skype, the web can go to Facebook, the web can go to Twitter, the web goes where you are. We're going to capture intent there. If you're talking about it in Facebook, we can capture that intent there and give you the option of doing something with it. If you're talking about it over email, we capture the intent there, give you the option of doing something about it in place. Now the second piece of this is that the knowledge, we want to expose exactly where the intent occurred. We want the distance between, hey, I need to get some work done, and the actual getting of the work done, we want to close that gap. No more wandering around the web. The next thing I've done is I've turned apps from a noun into a verb. An app is no longer something I must possess. In order to know when to pee at the movies, I have to have had the foresight to download that app. No. Your context of being in the movie, your intent to pee, is something I can capture, and I can just go out to the cloud for it. Is there functionality out there that will help my user while they're watching this movie? Ah, there it is. I'm going to have it ready for him or her. No more guessing, no more pre-installation. It just happens for you. And finally, the web and apps have just become ubiquitous. The browser's not a special piece of software. My calendar, my email, everything I have is just as capable of getting that information from the web as a browser. The app store is no longer a stop that we need to make. The functionality is available without going there. 
apps and the web are domesticated, they come to us. Okay, so I'm done. My name is James Whitaker. Wait. If you want to, if you enjoyed okay. this, my name is James Whitaker, and you can follow me there. If you didn't enjoy this, my name is David Kirkpatrick. Um, Wait, sit down, real fast. Oh, I have to sit I now? Wanna, Yeah, well, you don't have to sit down, but I want to ask you. <clears throat> very good presenter. There's no doubt about that. Thank you. So, so the vision for the P app, for example, is that you don't actually load anything. You're just in the movie, and your device maybe knows you're in the movie, and. If you just, I don't know, it's, how do they know you have to pee? I don't know. But somehow your app is just available and you can immediately get that kind of data because the context tells, some, what tells an app, tells my, a tells My a whole background. purpose in being here was to get the guy that wrote the Facebook effect to say pee on stage. That was the only reason I flew oh, to you, Munich. I could say a lot more than that on stage. <laughs> but, uh, but that's but, so that's the idea, right? We're, however that's the, the long-term vision is to really, a really big integration of, application functionality into human experience. That's right. It might be necessary, therefore my technology is going to make it available there just in case I need okay, it. Okay, so why is this a domestication of apps and not a corralling of apps by Microsoft? Explain what makes it a little more than just a Microsoft ad that you've been giving up here? So we're corralling apps right now, right? That's what we do. We go out and we gather apps and we corral them on our device. Your phone is different than my phone, which is different than everybody's phone because we have a different app profile. We've, we've gathered and corralled different apps. I don't want to do that. I want the functionality to sit in that, in the cloud, in Azure. Did you hear I said Azure? Did you all hear that? To sit in Azure and be ready for me. So in other so words, it could I work if I'm on an iPhone using a Google product? Yeah, I don't, I don't mind iPhones and Google products. They're okay. So this is a vision way beyond just Microsoft Advantage. You, you're, but that's down the road? This is a user-centric vision. How much of this functions today? Uh, almost all of it. So we have the ability to program Outlook. We call those out, uh, web, um, Office apps. The ability to do that is already exists. The APIs to pull knowledge from the web already exists. Uh, on developer.bing.com. Okay, just last quick question we got to wrap is, what's the basic message of why developers should love this so much? Why does this open up new opportunities for developers? So the idea being that you don't have to be installed. You don't, it's almost impossible to get yourself noticed in an app store these days. There are hundreds of thousands of these things out there. It's crazy. Getting noticed is really difficult. So you don't have to get noticed. If your functionality is valuable, your technology is going to have it available for the users. Okay, and That's as we walk idea. off stage, let me ask you this. Is Microsoft then going to create a platform where apps can reside that could then fit into this kind of an architecture? That's the whole idea, right? Okay. The Azure Data and Functionality Marketplace. Thank you, guys. Thank you.